Hello and welcome to Flutterflow Academy. Today we will have a look at columns and rows. Columns and rows are very important in mobile app development. If you want to build an app, you will have to use them. In this video, we will have a look at the design settings and what they mean. Check out our other videos to learn how to fill columns and rows with data or how to add animation. But for now, we will stick with the design. In the first part of the video, we will talk about why you need to use columns and rows. After that, we will talk about the special properties of columns and rows. And in the end, we will give you a tip what you can use as an alternative to columns and rows. But now, let's take a big sip of our coffee and let's get started. The time will come when you have to use your first column or row. For most developers, this is the time after they have added their first container to the app. So now let's go ahead over here to the widget selector, click container and drag it onto the empty homepage screen. Now if I want to add another container onto that screen, let's drag the container on, you see I will be asked if I want to add a column, add a row, add a stack or replace the current container. We will click to add columns. Now we can see that the second container is placed below the first container of the column inside. If we have a look at the widget tree, so let's click over here on widget tree, we can see that we have a column and two containers inside of that column. When are columns used now? Columns are used whenever you want to have multiple objects below or above to each other. The objects are aligned in a vertical direction. But now let's have a look at rows. Let's change back to the UI builder for that. Let's drag a row onto our screen. Now we will be asked again what we want to add. Let's click add row. When we take a look at the direction of the arrow in the row element, we will see that the rows behave differently to columns. If we add two containers to our row, at the second container, we can see that objects in rows are placed next to each other. The objects are aligned in a horizontal direction. Now you know how rows and columns behave and can experiment with them. Try to place different objects in rows and columns or a row inside of a column. Everything is possible. So in the next part of this video, we will talk about the different properties that a column has. For that, I will start with an empty screen again and I will select columns on my left hand side in the UI builder and drag it onto the screen. Inside of my column I will now add two containers. One container and I will select a second container and add this one as well. Now to make it more obvious I will color my containers in a different color. The first container I'll just select the fill color. I'll just color it in red. Click use color. For my second container I will also select fill color and just color it in the primary theme color. So now we have a blue and a red container above slash below each other. If you understand the concept of columns, understanding rows will be a piece of cake because spoilers ahead, rows have the same settings, I promise. To adjust the properties of our columns, let's take a look at the bottom part of our right menu bar. So I will select the column and now I will go over here to my right hand side and I have a menu. Now let's look at the column properties, which is the most bottom part here. Make sure that you click this toggle and have all these options toggled out. Now let's remember that the objects and columns are aligned in a vertical direction. Or if you want to rephrase this, the main axis of a column is a vertical. This is why the main axis alignment of a column influences the behavior on the vertical axis. Here on the right hand side you can see the main axis alignment as the second option and the main axis size as the first option. Let's talk about main axis alignment. With the first option selected the two containers are on top of the column. If we click at the second option the two containers which you can see colored here are in the middle of the column and if we select the third option the two containers are at the bottom of the column. So with these first three options of the main axis alignment, you can control where your containers or your objects inside of that column are placed or how they behave. 
The fourth option here is called space evenly. And this evenly spaces all the child elements. So now we have three spaces between the top, the bottom, and the two objects. Three even spaces. They are spaced evenly. With this one, you can play a bit of around. So if I want, was to add a third container into my column now, you could see if I color it in, let's say, the tertiary color, you can see that the spaces between the containers changed, but the spaces stayed the same in terms of size. You can play a bit around with this. I will now go ahead and delete my second container again. The fifth option is called space around. When this is active, both containers will have the exact same space around their top and bottom side. Let's click it. You can see now that both moved a bit more towards the end of the column. This is because now this first container has the same space above it than it has below it until the space around the second container starts. Just imagine an imaginary line here where my cursor is. See that as a divider. The last option is called space between. And you can see with this option, both containers will try to get as far away from each other as possible. That means in our column, they go towards the end of the column. If I was now to add a third container again into this column, you could see that it stays right in the middle of the column when I color it. This is because the three elements inside of my column try to get the biggest space possible between the three. This means at the both ends and in the middle. I will now go ahead and delete this third container again. So now we are left with the cross axis alignment. To understand cross axis alignment, let's change the width of the first container to 200. I will now go ahead, click on the first container, go to its properties here on the right hand side, select width, which is in pixels, and make it a 200. You can see that also the width of the column change which the container is in. Let's select the column again. The cross axis is the axis that crosses the main axis. In a column, the main axis is vertical, so the cross axis needs to be, you can guess it, horizontal. That's right. With the first option selected, all elements will be placed at the most left of our column. Let's select the first option and cross axis alignment. You can see that both containers are placed to the most left of our column. With the second one in the middle and with the third one on the right side, you can play around a bit and place the objects inside of the column differently. With the second one, both are placed as centered as possible on our cross axis alignment. With the third option, both are placed on the right hand side. The last option is called stretch. This stretches all elements to take up all the horizontal space available in the column. If I click on stretch now, you can see that also the width of both containers changes as they try to take up most space possible. This means in our example, they will take up the whole screen because this is the maximum space that is allocated to the column or therefore also to the containers. So now we understand main and cross axis alignment and we are only left with two other options, scrollable, here at the bottom and main exercise at the top. Main exercise is pretty simple. The normal setting of a column is that it will take up as much space in the main axis as possible. If you now switch this, it will take up the least amount of space that is possible. You can see that the whole column does not take up the whole screen anymore, but it just takes up as much space as needed for the two containers inside. Now for this last part, let's have a look at scrollable. For that, we will adjust one of the containers to have a height of 1000. For that, I will select the first red container up here and under container properties, under height, pixel selected, I'll just add another, another zero. Now you can see that the container takes up way more space than before of the column. Even it takes up so much space that we can't even see the blue container anymore. So now let's go over to our widget tree here on the left hand side, select the column again and have a look at scrollable. Right now, scrollable is selected on the first option. We do not allow scrolling here. But now, let's change it and allow scrolling. You can see that we can scroll now 
inside of the column. And if I scroll down far enough, we can see the blue container. If we scroll up again, we are at the top of the red container. If we scroll down again, we can see the blue container. If this is deactivated, we won't be able to do this and the container will simply overflow the screen. You should avoid this because it will be impossible for users to reach this point where the blue container is in of the app. So if you pack a lot of stuff with a lot of height inside of one column, you definitely want to activate scroll again. Now we have looked at all available options for columns. But what about rows? Well, as I have promised, they have the exact same setting. They really do. The only thing that is different is the logic. Because in a row, the main axis is not the same as in a column. In a row, the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. Try it yourself. With Flutterflow, it's very easy to memorize because the symbols of the property settings will match your orientation. However, if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we will answer them for you. As I've said in the beginning, rows and columns are not the only option for you to create the layout of your elements. There's also the wrap element, which you can find in the UI builder here on the left hand sidebar in the layout elements section. Here at the bottom, we have the wrap element. It uses the same logic as rows and columns. And if you're curious how to use it exactly, you can check out our video about them. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and give us a comment how you liked the video. Happy Flutterflowing!